So let's say you can't get fish down the exterior wall of your house or you don't care about surface conduit. You can use surface conduit similar to what we've did in the past for the solar inverter. All right, I'm gonna walk you through NEMA 1450 outlet, America's most popular choice for electric vehicle charging, plus some accessories, seen and unseen. I've got my parts in front of me. Let me walk you through them real quick. NEMA 1450 receptacle. That is by far the most popular consumer choice for EV charging in the United States. This is a Hubble. Part number is HBL9450A. That is gonna give you the most durable electrical connection at what is likely to be the most likely point of failure. If you look up videos and photos of electric vehicle charging fails, they almost always take place right here because this is the most finicky, most substantial field connection. So I highly recommend do not purchase the $10 receptacle off the shelf at Lowe's or Home Depot that says industrial. It is not industrial. This is industrial. This is $100 more. It weighs twice as much and is two times as large. Even though they're both NEMA 1450, the quality on this sucker is through the roof in contrast to the off the shelf at the home center. Number one. Number two, we've got a Leviton two pole 50 amp breaker. The Leviton panels are sweet. We've got a video on that, check right here. Leviton breaker, so 50 amp matches 50 amp. We've got 50 amp rated wire. This is 6.3 Romex. This is the most expensive part of the project. It's about five bucks a foot and we're running about 30 feet for 150 bucks. Electrical tape for fishing the wire. One connector for at the panel. That's a three quarter inch Romex connector. We've got a cable organizer. If you have a Tesla wall connector or something of that nature, it's gonna have built-in cable organization. In this case, because the only thing you're gonna see on the outside of the wall is this receptacle on the plate, you're gonna want something of this nature to organize the cable and keep it off the floor. This is like 28 bucks on Amazon. We've got mounting hardware for a box and plate of this type. Now let me tell you what, this box has incredible depth, which is so nice when you're mounting an EV1450 receptacle because it fits in there really well with lots of wiring space. But that's for surface mount applications with conduit. Unfortunately, we don't get to use that today. We're gonna use a two gang remodel box and put all the wiring inside the wall for the cleanest installation possible. Sometimes that's not possible, but today it is. The only tough part is the outlet almost completely fills that box. And by the time you put three six gauge conductors plus the ground in there, it's very snug to get it into the wall. We're utilizing fish sticks for fishing the wire down the wall. Coupling a few together, we've got a fish hook on the end. That's gonna make that job a lot easier. And beyond that, just a bunch of elbow grease. Hey, I wanted to show you the tools that I utilized to execute on the NEMA 1450 install. Links to all these tools or similar types will be in the description below. We've got the stud finder, the right angle drill, an extension, a one inch self-feeding auger bit. Look at the threads on that baby. That just pulls it right through the framing members with more ease. We've got a right angle attachment because the rafters came down so tight to the studs that got us in tight spaces. Level for beautiful work, wire strippers, Allen wrench, number two square drive for terminations at the panel, insulated fiberglass hammer, Klein keyhole saw, staples, forgot to put those in my materials for you. You can utilize a three quarter inch staple or a number six SER staple. Fish sticks, could substitute fish tape. Utility knife for wire stripping as well. Sharp blade makes all the difference. A source of light for work in the attic. An impact with a number two Phillips for mounting the box and receptacle. And of course, you can't forget a little good old fashioned elbow grease. Let me show you how to connect the cable reliably to the hook on your fish tape. I'm gonna strip it back. I'm after that grounding conductor right there. It's solid copper, 10 gauge. It's gonna give me a great connection. I'm gonna use any kind of copper wire cutting apparatus to trim off the other conductors. Oh, it's a little small for the task at hand. All right, pinch it down. I'm trying to smooth the edges so that cable pulls through the hole cleanly. I recommend using a self-feeding wood bit like the one I'll show you and 
making at least a 7 8 hole to pull your cable through nice and smoothly. Pinch it over. Now that is a reliable connection that will withstand a lot of force. But you always want to put your electrical tape on there. I will say, duct tape, painter's tape, scotch tape, masking tape, no other kind of tape but, paint, but electrician's tape. And it has got that elasticity, which allows it to be pulled tightly and have a much, much better grab than any other form of tape. So if you're gonna do this project, spend the time and energy to get the, uh, spend the dollar at the home center, get the Scotch 33 or 88, you'll thank yourself. So now I'm gonna try to smooth that edge right there. And that's gonna facilitate my wire pull. There, that's what we're looking for. All right, Cliff. Time to head to the attic. Cliff's going to drill a hole, fish the uh, fish tape down to me, and my goal is to get the end of the wire hanging out of the wall. So we've got bike racks on the wall right here. So we're putting our NEMA 1450 outlet low to avoid the bikes. Per the customer request, using a stud finder. Boom. Boom. All right, we've got that. I'm also going to go vertically to make sure I don't see anything else in the wall there. Looks clean. Um, now, if you don't have a stud finder, often, especially in a garage, you can see nail pops. So if you look real closely, there's a nail pop right there that lines up with a stud. And the next stud should be 16 inches on center. And you can see a crack right there, a little bulge right on the stud. So if you don't have a nail finder, you can use echolocation or you can look for nail pops. Another trick, using a flashlight laid along the wall, you can see the vertical seam between two pieces of drywall right on the stud. If you're a Jefferson Electric Prentice, always pencil, never Sharpie. You never know when something goes wrong, you gotta rework it. I'm just gonna check the wall for depth and obstacles. Boom. Make sure that matches with my box, awesome. Drywall saw or keyhole saw. You can use a utility knife and an oscillator, but this method is quick, it's manual, it's cheap, anyone can afford it. You can buy a keyhole saw for eight bucks and it keeps the dust down. Anytime you use a powered tool, that causes the dust to plume. More cleanup. even uninsulated. That's odd. It's going to make our fish much more easily. Apparently garages in 1982 did not require insulation. Open up just a little bit. Oh. Alright Cliff, ready when you are. So Joel is downstairs tapping on the ceiling so that I know where to drill my hole down for this 6.3 wire run for the EV charger. Um, since I can't see down there, I need somebody down there to tell me where I'm drilling. Does this sound right, Joel? This is a right angle attachment for a driver so that we can get into tight spaces to drill down. Um, the roof line prevents us from getting a full driver inside of there. And this actually reduces the amount of space I need to drill by about three inches. Okay, now, we're, now that we have the hole drilled through the top plate there, we're going to fish this fish stick down to Joel. Um, and it's got the wire already attached to it. So once he grabs it, we should fly pretty quickly. So everybody's got a smartphone. Everyone's got a flash. You can stick it in the wall and check out what's going on. And there's the fish stick. All right, Cliff, up a little bit. Hang on to it. The fish is valuable. Once you have it, don't lose it. All right, I got it. I'm pulling it out. 
communication is the key to every great team. Nice and easy. Don't these, these fish sticks, especially this little kind here, are very flexible and very fragile. She's got to wait. He's got a big tangle of wire up there. Tangle, air quotes. And uh, there's stuff stored in the attic, as you saw, so we just have to be patient, feed it through. We don't want the insulation of the Romex cable to be damaged. So just patience. It's like fishing. All right. It's tight. There we go. All right, we're through the hole. Got a pull and feed from above in, in tandem. Um, got pressure on it. Can you feed a little bit more? Poor Cliff lying on his belly across the uh, ceiling joists. It's not comfortable. That's one of the worst things about being an electrician or a plumber. I'm just going to take what I need here and the rest is going to go. That's good. Right there. The reason I've got a little bit more is a service loop. I'm going to come in the bottom of the box like that. I'm going to have just a little extra in the wall, maybe another eight inches there. Boom. Article 334 in the National Electrical Code does not require Romex or NM cable to be stapled or secured when it's fished in voids like this. So the fact that there are no staples other than what's going in the attic within every four and a half feet is code compliant. Always check in with your local codes and standards, however, because that's on you. Do you need to fire cock the holes in the top plates where you make vertical penetrations? That's pretty much universal building code. Now that Joel has fished the wire for us, we're going to, I already put the wire into this box. Um, this wire is super stiff, so you want to make sure that you route your wire into the void of the wall so that when you push this box in, you aren't going to crack the drywall around this and cause another issue um, or money uh, cost to the project. Screw this in. We're landing the outlet now. Um, as you can see, I have pre-bent these wires so that when I finish terminating this, I can just push the outlet in without having to fight it. Um, once we get done with this outlet installation, we'll put the mount here where I've already marked the stud um, so that we can go straight into a stud and get the most support as possible. Then we'll go into the attic, staple the wire down so that it isn't a tra trip hazard, drop it down into our 200 amp electrical panel and finish the terminations there. The installation will be complete. So now we're stapling in the attic to get the wire um, neatly managed. So let's say you can't get fish down the exterior wall of your house or you don't care about surface conduit. You can use surface conduit similar to what we've did in the past for the solar inverter here. Now you see we lacked a little due diligence and ran into a ceiling joist and had to use a conduit bender to bend a slight offset. We've got minis which are conduit supports required by code. We've got a connector and then instead of terminating in equipment like this, for electric vehicle charging you'd terminate in a box like this. It'd all be surface mounted and you'd utilize anchors into the stud if at all possible. These two drywall anchors came with our mounting bracket. Go ahead and throw those away and just use drywall screws. All right, we're not done until we check everything. I want you to know one thing. I really like this organizer because it's got a strain relief built in. So when you plug in your receptacle, you can let that adapter hang and then you can run the cord through here. And that, my friends, will provide strain relief. So if somebody trips over the cord, it's pulling on this, which is mounted to the stud and not jeopardizing your receptacle and your electrical connection.
All right, we've got a Leviton smart panel here for an electric vehicle installation. I've got a 50 amp breaker. My wires are terminated on the side. I've got to match up the N with the neutral, even though they're two neutral terminals. I'm gonna rock that baby in there. Ah, make sure everything's firmly tight and turn it on. Now let's go test the outlet. Boom, final electrical check, 249, love it. 125, just as expected, and 124. So you're asking, what's the money like on a job like this? I'll tell you what, I had under $400 in materials. I had about five labor hours for a total of 1,400 for the installation of the cable organizer and the outlet all the way back to the circuit panel. Now, if you can throw surge protection in there and a panel inspection, you can charge another 300 bucks, give or take, for surge protection, depending on the quality of the unit, the complexity of the installation, and another 150 to 250 bucks for complete panel inspection. In this case, we actually ended up replacing the entire electrical panel for another $2,200 to a beautiful Leviton, which was a $300 adder for 2,500 bucks. Today turned out to be a $4,000 day. Check out our next video here for upgrading your sub panel and subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.